Hello everyone, I'm Dan. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to append one string to another using the strcat function. First things first, let's go ahead and open up uh, your web browser to my website, thegpu.com. Select Menu, and then See Tutorials. Scroll down here to uh, basically appending strings with stringcat. So the strcat, the stringcat function, is fairly straightforward. It simply concatenates, in other words, appends one string to another. The first argument is a string that we are going to append to, and the second argument is a string that we are going to append. Here's the declaration here. Now there are some pitfalls to be aware of, and they are primarily issues related to memory management. I can't emphasize enough that C is not smart like some other languages, and is up to you to not do stupid stuff like what I'm going to demonstrate towards the end of this tutorial. Let's go ahead and write some code. All right, let's uh, minimize this. And I'm shooting these in 4K now. So um, if we right click and select new shortcut, type in CMD, we end up with some really small lettering here, you know, but I don't really want that. It doesn't matter to me. One way to create a, sh a command prompt if you don't already have it, otherwise we can just do search windows, type in um, CMD, right? And um, I will go ahead and open up the command prompt there. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is type in GCC, and you should see this message right here. However, if you see like command contains unrecognized phrase or keyword, uh, follow my tutorial on installing GCC. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly first. CD slash to move the root, CDC. Oh, okay, I'm going to do a make directory here, C demo, right? I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create one for you. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, make that directory uh, C demo here, right? I'll change directories to it. And then I'm going to make a directory here and I'm going to call this uh, stringcat demo. All right, strcat demo. And let's go ahead and change directories to the strcat demo folder here. And I'm going to notepad uh, strcat demo.c for our file there. All right, and i move notepad over here. Okay, everything is popping up off screen with my new 4K format, but that's okay. All right, um, let's go ahead and bring the web browser back up here. And let's scroll down to the source code, and we're just going to highlight everything here. And we'll go ahead and copy that. I'll move my browser off screen here. And pull back up Notepad, and let's just paste that right back in there. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dive in there. Uh, let's go over just a couple things here real quick before I do, though. Um, so we're, we're including the string.h, right, which is where all the, uh, the str cat, str copy, and some other functions, useful functions that I'm going to go over in my next few tutorials are located. And I've got, I'm, I'm doing some interesting stuff to show you pitfalls here. So I'm simply uh, declaring and initializing this in a variable to 8675309. Um, and then I am uh, initial, declaring and initializing this uh, char array, right? Which is basically the, what a string is there, world, right? And it's going to automatically create the length on it there. And then I'm declaring this hello uh, with a length of 12, right? So we've got our char array 12 there and setting that equal to hello. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six characters there and five plus room for the null zero. And then I'm going to demonstrate the str cat here, right? And then we're going to go into some really interesting stuff after that. So let's come up here, file, save this. Let's pop back to the command prompt here. Uh, let's just clear our screen real quick there. Let's GCC this and then minus O for the output file. And we'll call it that, right? Okay. And let's do a directory here. So we got our exe and let's go ahead and just run that real quick here. And I'm going to scroll up here. You know what? I'm going to clear the screen and then run it. There we go. That'll be a little bit cleaner here. All right. Um, so looking at the code up here, here I'm just using the printf function to display the value of hello after we've done after I've done the, the str cat. Hello is the to string, world the from string there. So hello equals hello world, right? Just using the uh, percent %s there. Um, now the next thing I'm coming down here, I'm going to show you how to do some stupid stuff here. In other words, uh, don't do this. But be aware of it, you know, and maybe do it. Um, 
overwrite some memory, see what happens. Uh, so the value of A is 8675309, right? And I'm using the size of uh, operator here to display the size of A, and A is, is, is an int, and so it's four bytes long. And then I'm using, uh, and don't worry about this syntax just yet, you know, it's a little bit more advanced than A to B, but this is the address of operator here. And so basically A is located uh, 6,356,780 bytes over is where that starts, right? It's going to take up four bytes, so it's going to be 80, 81, 82, and 83. Okay. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to string copy hello overflows this value right here, just this string literal, right? And then I'm going to st uh, string cat into this are really bad space, really bad. And then display that to the console. So you can see right over here, hello equals overflows are really bad. Now the size of using the size of operator, hello, it's still equal to 12 up here, right? Um, and then I'm going to display the address of this here using the address of operator here. Once again, don't worry about all this stuff. It's a, it's a little bit more technical, but, you know, with C, C is one of these languages, you know, that, you know, in order to be really efficient at it, you have to, like, understand everything about it. So there's a lot of putting the cart before the horse in, in teaching this. Um, so anyway, so the address of hello is going to start out, at, you know, uh, 6,356,000. But note the 762, right? And if it was 12 bytes long, it would basically go from 62 to like 71, right? Of course, 62 is included in that one there, right? And so our next one here that I'm going to demonstrate here is world, right? Okay, so world originally contain just plain old world and it was it was actually six bytes long and and we'll demonstrate that right here with this next line of code so we print off world now and world equals e really bad and that's because overflows overflowed world's value too as well so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve right and then a 12 right here at R, sorry. And then the E overflowed all this stuff. And now you can see the value of world, world contains E really bad, right? But the size of it is still 6. And the address of world was at uh, 74, right? 774. Okay, so we overflowed world, which is not really too big of a deal. But uh, the A that we have right here now... Um, if we just do the same old printf that we did right up here, you can actually see that A is no longer equal to 8675309. It's equal to this giant value right here, right? Um, so the, the biggest problem, as you could probably see, is like if you have some sort of uh, a worst case scenario would be a, a banking app written in C and balances were, you know adjusted and you know overflows that could be really bad but one of the interesting things that that c allows you to do is though even though we only have 12 elements allocated for the the char array for up here in hello we can go through all of these 12 elements as a matter of fact we there's nothing to stop um there's nothing to stop us from going through any number of elements right and and seeing what's actually in memory well beyond that there so in the source code over here, you know, technically this would be the end, but why not go uh, up another, you know, 11 bytes and you can actually see that in fact, you know, it is actually taking up now a total of, you know, 24 bytes plus the null zero. So it's actually 25 bytes long. And so that's basically what I wanted to make you guys aware of there is how easy it is to, to uh, overflow memory and kind of give you guys like maybe a, you know, a an idea of how when we uh, declare variables up here um, in this particular case and it's not not this way with every uh, it may not be this way with everything there but the it assigns the variables kind of backwards in memory space there so in other words hello got assigned the uh, the lowest um, first in the in the in the string of uh, well in 
in the way the memory is laid out, right, down here at 62. Then the next one, which was in the order of the code, right, it got the next one. And then the very first one that we did was the was the furthest up in memory. So that's why this variable was able to over, overflow this one and this one, right? Um, if this had been first and this had been second and the int had been third, right, it wouldn't have actually um, overflowed int a for sure because in that particular case a would have had the lowest memory address uh world uh would have still been in the in the middle there and then yeah, i forgot what it anyway um but you guys get the get with the, the gist of what i'm trying to say and you can you can screw around with moving these things around and and using the address of operator even though i haven't gone over with that there it's uh it's kind of a fun little little exercise there Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that, minimize that, and uh, that pretty much does it for this tutorial. Stay tuned uh, for next, uh, my next few tutorials where we'll talk in a little bit about string manipulation. Take care and thanks for watching.